What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Strange Land Podcast. My name is Kenny, and I'm here with my good friend, Stefan. What's up? What's going on, my What's dudes? <sighs> How have you been today, Stefan? I mean, we've been around each other all day, but... <laughs> yeah, you, you know. <laughs> you seem like you're doing pretty good. Doing great. Yeah. Doing great as usual. <clears throat> so, today is a true crime uh, episode, for the most part. It's kind of a kind of a weird... It is definitely a true crime. This was definitely a crime, but it's not a murder, luckily. There were, there were no deaths. Uh, well, I guess there was one. There was a self inflicted murder there was a yeah it was a suicide <laughs> that's what they call self-inflicted that self-inflicted <laughs> murder yeah um so i'm really i'm really you know i'm really excited for today uh we'll get into that in a minute but first i want to talk about i just want to thank everyone on youtube uh we're trying to come back and we have a lot of you know we're definitely growing in subscribers and we're growing in views and we have people commenting, and we have people very – it's very, very encouraging to see a lot of people come out and tell us that, you know, they want to hear uh, the podcast. They want new episodes. Um, so everyone that's commenting and subscribing and listening, thank you very much because it really, truly is motivation. It's a lot of motivation to get back and, um, you know, try to reformat the channel and go further with it. It's very, very comforting. To hear yeah, all that it's good cool. feedback. Strange Land season two has begun. Yeah, I don't know if that's what we're going to call it. I guess it's kind <laughs> no. of. Look, I mean, it is, is what it is. It yeah. just is whether we call it that or not. Pretty much. But we are beginning to upload episodes back onto uh, other types of platforms like iTunes and uh, Stitcher and Google Play and you know all those podcasts. Po- I, maybe Podbean, all those different types of um, apps that you listen to podcasts on, we're going to be back on there. We started re-uploading the previous episodes on there, and we're going to upload this one on there as well. Uh, so from now on, we're going to upload all the episodes to the podcast apps and on YouTube. So you can always check us out on there under the Strange Land podcast. But today... We are talking about something, man. This is really weird. This, this, this was some crazy stuff. Until I started researching this, <clears throat> I had I had heard of the name because Stefan brought this pot. Stefan brought this idea to me, this topic up to me, and it was awesome. This is like exactly the kind of episode I want to do. Um, and I'd heard of it, but I never researched in, in it uh, into it. Uh, but it is it is Killdozer. Yeah, the killdozer. I'm the so kill excited. Dozer. Like um I had known about this for a while, but it's uh it's it definitely um touches me in a special place. <laughs> as weird as that sounds. Like it's um I don't know. I feel like I have a lot of conflicting thoughts about this case to begin with, and it's really just interesting at its base. So yeah, I'm it excited. A, <clears throat> it is a real conflicting thing because when you really get into the story and into what happened, you almost feel like, all right, this guy was definitely wronged, but he went a bit far in his revenge plan uh, to get back at the people that had wronged him. That's a subjective opinion, Kenny. It is kind of subjective, for (laughs) sure. (laughs) I mean, most, hopefully most people wouldn't do what he did in his situation. Um, so, you want to explain sort of the outline of what we'll be talking about tonight? So, yeah, today we're going to be talking about Marvin Hemeyer, who basically, I guess, dumbed down. The dumbed down version of it is this guy built a, a makeshift tank mm-hmm. that was very effective and sort of uh, destroyed his town for a couple different reasons. Yeah. But he he ended up going on this rampage. He actually didn't kill anyone. Mm -hmm. But himself. um, But himself. He was the only one who died. But, um, yeah, he he ended up, when it was all said and done, he had like $7 million worth of damage done. (laughs) To his town, yeah. And and he used a, uh, I don't know if I'm saying this right, a Kamatsu D355A bulldozer. And... He he was a welder. He owned a muffler shop in uh, Granby, Colorado, 
And so he did this for, he welded for a living. He kind of knew how to build things. And so it, it really ended up working out for him that he owned this muffler shop and that he could make this makeshift tank um, out of this bulldozer. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So he, he was had a, the skills. He was a, a good welder, yeah. obviously. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like just even the muffler shop in itself is like good foreshadowing to what was uh, to come. Exactly, yeah. And it's, I don't know, the, the whole story is pretty interesting. He, you know, he, he always goes on as <clears throat> to how reasonable he is. He's a reasonable man. And, you know, everyone around him would say that he was a pretty reasonable guy. He didn't really um, act too crazy to anyone. He wasn't like the town crazy person. I, you know, I didn't read yeah. anything like that. He, uh, I did read something about some guy who had, a, who had had a muffler repair altercation with him. I, I guess, I guess, um, Sounds serious. Yeah, I guess, uh, Marvin didn't, I guess he didn't do a good job on this guy's repair. And, uh, this guy had refused to pay him and supposedly Marvin had threatened him. Uh, who knows? Threats can be, you know, it's hard to say what constitutes a threat, right? I mean, sure. I mean, and there's you know, always maybe. pissed off customers anywhere uh, you go. So, yeah, but to give the guy some respect, uh, Marvin did go on to destroy an entire town, so he probably threatened this dude, you know. Yeah. I could see him. Certainly doing that. possible. Yeah, definitely. Um, so to start it, you know, to start off what was kind of happening was so he again, he owned this muffler shop in Granby, Colorado. And he had purchased he had the land and he had the shop, and he had land surrounding the shop. Uh I believe about two acres worth of land and he had purchased this land for $42,000. And so he built the muffler shop on that land and he also had um, extra land kind of around the shop and he had agreed to sell this extra land uh, to Cody Doshef and Cody Doshef was going to build a concrete batch plant uh, called mountain park concrete. And, um, the the agreed original agreed price that they came to was two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So he's already making a decent amount of money off of this transaction, off of this sell. And uh, but supposedly what had happened is throughout the negotiations, Marvin continues to raise the price on what he wants to sell the remaining land for. It goes from two hundred fifty thousand to three hundred seventy five thousand, and eventually. A uh, deal is made, uh, or he at least he demanded a deal. Yeah, that was worth about a million dollars. Yeah, I don't think they ever uh, like once that happened, that pretty much cut off all the communication. Really, <clears throat> that like the the deal didn't go any further than that. They but, were, but just he like, did end up coming to a deal. Or oh no 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 no, that's right. I mean, yeah. So it was something. It was basically a zoning zoning thing within the city's trustees and the uh they bas the city basically approved construction of the concrete batch plants. Um and I, I believe I believe that happens without a sale of any actual land. Is that correct? You don't know? Nope. Yeah. I mean it was so from what I could read I don't think he ever actually sold any land. It doesn't. It no, doesn't. He didn't. Yeah. They bought land around him. Though. That's right. Yeah, like that's west right. of his property, the concrete company, and he, he actually talks about this in his his tapes as well. Like he was super worried about like the air quality being like downstream from this concrete factory, which yeah. makes sense. Like, yeah. um, it's not good <clears throat> for business. Yeah. He, he, and really he, he really does just express that he didn't want this place, um, anywhere near him. And he had a couple petitions as well to like not have it built. Yeah. And the thing is it also blocked his entry into his own shop. And so he would have had to have built a road that led around the concrete plant. Which he planned to do. Which he had planned to do. Even um, purchase all the materials. He got the asphalt, the concrete, and, oh, and a bulldozer. And a bulldozer, yeah, which is where the bulldozer comes into play. 
<clears throat> so we've kind of talked about, you know, he's having these disputes. Uh, he doesn't, he didn't want to sell the land. He didn't want this concrete. Um, it kind of just seemed like, for one thing, he bought this land for $42,000 in 1992. Now, this happened in 2004. The actual, at least the rampage. The event. The happened. event happened in 2004. So if he bought this land in 1992 for $42,000, he's trying to sell it for 250000 It kind of seems as if he, that's a lot of money. He's mm-hmm. making a gigantic profit off the sale of this land if he were to sell it for $250,000. But it seems as if he doesn't actually want to sell it. It kind of seems, even obviously, it seems like he just threw out $250,000 because maybe he didn't believe that he could sell it for that much. Well, he's probably trying to make the most money he can. I don't blame him. But, and after they agreed for $250,000, like I said before, he kind of raises up the price. So it seems as if he's <laughs> yeah. just like, you know what, no. So four times How about, times how about you pay price. this? Ha ha, you won't do that, will you? Obviously not. Right. So he was. it seems like he was just throwing out ridiculous prices in order to, you know, get this guy to go away and go somewhere else. So he's already, have, he's already having major disputes with uh, Cody Doshef about the concrete batch plant. And it seems as if there's some fishy stuff going on with Cody Doshef. And yeah, either way, he the, like the concrete uh, plant ends up being built. Like regardless yeah. of the petitions, some people say that there was some shady shit happening to where like um, you know Cody was in with um, the higher ups in the town and just able to to make it happen. Either oh, way, it was built. <clears throat> oh, he was definitely regardless if know. that was the case or not. I don't know, but you know, and that's the thing. I mean. It's hard to say because there is some information, but there's not a ton of information. And I don't think, you know, I don't think the Doshef fan, Doshe family or whatever, his wife, has really come out and said much. I mean, she talked about the prices that he originally wanted to sell it for and blah, blah, blah. But I don't think that they had a lot of, you know, so it's hard to say. But the thing is, is at a certain point, it might just be easier to buy out the people that run the city versus buying this land from this dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's, it might be easier to bribe people into helping him get his plant built versus paying what Marvin wanted, the million, the one million dollar deal. You know? Well, the way um, <clears throat> Haymeyer sort of describes, uh, describes Cody as being sort of like abrasive. Like they never had sort of had a good relationship. Yeah. I mean, they, they got along well enough, but it was, it was never like a buddy buddy type of situation. Like as long as they knew each other, uh, Haymeyer knew that, uh, Cody wanted that land. Mm -hmm. So, and, and they're sort of, it seems to be like over the years, their only relationship was sort of about, that exactly and it wasn't yeah it wasn't a friendship that's for sure yeah and so in 2001 <clears throat> excuse me the so the zoning commission and the town trustees again they went in and just said you you know you can go ahead and construct this concrete batch plan and yeah like you said earlier marvin attempted to he appealed the decision multiple times uh he was unsuccessful obviously and again, he claimed that the construction had blocked access to the shop. So he had, you know, he had he had to come up with a way to get to his shop. So he bought a bunch of material. He bought a bulldozer, and he <clears throat> he was going to plan to build it. And then it seemed as if everyone was kind of against Marvin, um, at least from the city, because I've I, you know I've read and heard that he had a lot of support from community members but not from the city itself because he had signed, he had petitions signed, right? Uh, from people like he had petitions signed for him from community members that he would give to the city. And, but that, but you know, the, his appeals were still denied. Yeah. None of that ended up really mattering. The concrete plan was going up either way. And I guess that's the weirdest thing. It's like, did, was there some relationship between uh, Cody and the mayor of the town at that time? Yeah, I think so. I don't so. know. Yeah. I mean, people say there there was, but it's, I don't know. Yeah, and we're not trying to, like, defend the, the, the perpetrator here. We're not trying to defend Marvin necessarily, but it definitely seems like 
some people had treated him wrong. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that what he would end up doing is justified because it's obviously not. There's a million other ways that you could, you know, he could have gone through this and anyone could have really. Um, but he definitely seemed like he was being um, treated poorly. And he was fined $2,500 after all of this, even after not, even after his appeals being declined, he was fined $2,500 uh, by the town council for a bunch of different violations, including uh, just bunch, just junk cars and other types of materials being left on his property. And do you know more about the sewer line? Well, yeah, apparently he was even trying to... They, they shut his sewer line off in water eventually due to the zoning issues. And when he tried to ask Cody for... Uh, permission to basically connect to the sewer line. They even denied that. So they were basically pushing back on him. And, and then finding him for what they were denying him for, right? Exactly. Yeah. So they denied him access to the sewage and water lines, but then denied him, or not denied him, but uh, fined him because he didn't, because he couldn't have He it wasn't compliant yeah. with the city's law. But they wouldn't let him be compliant. Yeah. Man, remember when we first started this podcast? Anytime I, one of us would mess up and say a wrong word, we'd go back and edit. Like we'd go back and be like, "Okay, we have to redo this." Oh, I'm sure that's Dude. not gone forever. <laughs> no, but we're not. You know, we don't do that anymore. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I just did it. You'll be doing it. Oh, I'll be doing it. <laughs> I'll be doing. I'll it. make sure of that. <laughs> anyway, so look, Marvin has definitely come under fire from the city. Uh, from just the uh, from Cody Doshef, who is running the concrete or building the car, the concrete plant, and he's getting really frustrated, and you know he see he he feels like everyone's going against him, and what else is going wrong in his life at this point? Yeah, so the year of two thousand four, his dad dies. Mm -hmm. um, He's still dealing with the troubles um, around him, the concrete plant, signing the petitions, getting ignored by a city, or at least the, the government officials of his city. Mm -hmm. And he finds his wife... Uh, well, no, no, I'm sorry. It wasn't his wife. It was a girl he was engaged to. He basically found her cheating on him with another dude. So Those are going uh, downhill for Marvin. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it was... Uh, an interesting year for him, to say the least. Man, can you imagine all this happening? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I can imagine being very <laughs> unhappy. Yeah, you're definitely unhappy, but I don't think that you would build this tank. If I was smart enough, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully not, dude. Whatever, man. I could just see you going cool. through the city and just tearing it. Oh, tearing it. How dare you? Oh, and yeah. This is almost like the tank incident in San Diego. Uh, what was his name? Let me see. Uh, yeah, I don't even know about this. You're the one who told me about this. I looked a little bit into it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Sean Nelson. That's and, right. Yeah, in 1995. He, I think a lot of people have heard of Sean Nelson. He was the guy who went on the tank rampage in San Diego in 1995. And, I mean, I've seen this a million times. You know, he ran over cars, fire hydrants, RV, a bunch of stuff. He just went on this long rampage. And um, I don't think he didn't kill anyone either, which is crazy. Right. Yeah. I can't remember exactly. We might have to do an episode about it. Or maybe we'll talk about this at the end of the episode uh, just a little bit. Because this one's not as interesting. I think the Sean Nelson episode, even though it was a real tank, or the Sean, uh, Nel Sean Nelson uh, just... That Case event story, yeah, isn't as interesting as Marvin's because he stole a tank while Marvin built a, f a tank. Like, sure, he's going through and building this tank. Yeah, he built it, and it was like a year and a half he built it. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> like uh, this is another weird thing is that he said there were people over like in his shed that had seen the kill dozer before it had, you know before 2004 like people had seen it being built mm -hmm. and no one said anything about it i guess which is kind of strange i would definitely ask about it like seeing <laughs> the image itself i'm like oh yeah, yeah. what is that <laughs> tell yeah. me yeah it um, kind of just depends man i mean i could see oh i'm definitely <laughs> asking 
It de- well, it depends on if you know what it looks like during its construction. Yeah. Because the thing is, is he had this bulldozer, and whenever he went on the rampage, he had everything like set down on top of the bulldozer. He basically. So what he did was he got um, like half inch to an inch and a half steel plating, and then put like. I want to say another 10 inches of concrete and then more steel plating. So he basically yeah. made armor to go around the bulldozer and yeah. he would have to get a crane to lift the shell that went over the bulldozer onto the bulldozer itself when he yeah. went on his rampage. And guys, this thing is insane looking. We're going to I mean obviously like we're going to put pictures up you should be looking at a picture right now of this thing. Yeah, uh, if you're if you're listening on YouTube, there's definitely pictures already. Yeah, if you're if you're listening on a podcast app, I strongly suggest Google searching Killdozer, Marvin, uh, Heimeyer, and or Heimeyer, Heimeyer, and looking at the images uh, because damn, this is like a big yellow bulldozer, like a regular bulldozer, but big. It's a big ass bulldozer. Just with, it looks like some type of Mad Max machine, dude. Yeah, like it's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, you know, it is pretty cool for just a uh, a guy to build yeah, in, in his, his spare shed, time. Dude. Yeah, yeah, Over it's the, pretty cool looking. Yeah, and back to the point, it's like, if I saw that, I would definitely ask questions. <laughs> yeah. But we don't really know exactly what it looked like during its construction, so. I mean, maybe, but yeah. I, I could see if he was doing a good job at hiding everything, I could see how, you know, someone might not ask a question about it, but right. yeah, for him to bring that up, I guess it probably looked pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the modifications and the more I look at this thing, it is just absolutely insane that someone built this and just went on a rampage. This yeah. is some Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> fictional crap it's man. better than grand theft auto almost like it's more thought out like yeah. we we just talked about you know this guy had basically bulletproof armor and armor shield over uh the top of the bulldozer itself mm-hmm. but he also had protection on the tracks itself do you know what he had to protect the the wheels i know he had some sort of method in place i don't know i don't know about that um i know that yeah i know that he protected the engine yeah i mean it it, it says it's just makeshift armor plating um right the and that, housing but, and, itself yeah and that's that said that that also covered parts of the tracks which is like okay. kind of it's kind of going a bit i mean because they're not taking out these tracks without some sort of bomb you know they're like the 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 local police aren't taking out these tracks. Well, the local police probably don't have bombs. That's what I'm saying. They're not. <laughs> that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like he's making sure that they can't. Which in reality, they probably wouldn't be able to anyways. Right. I mean, that shit's tough. It's basically a tank. And like, again, this is a big ass. Dual, uh, this is a big bulldozer. It's a again. It's a Kamatsu a D355A. So just Google that, or just Google the killdozer, and you'll see. Why do you say it like that? I don't know. All right. That's obviously... That's fine. Don't, don't call we me We don't out. have to dwell on How it. dare you? <laughs> How dare you call me out on my my sayings? Okay. All right. I was just, just a question. And while, while you're at it, we'll, we'll throw in some images of the inside of this bulldozer. And if you're not seeing it, just look it up. Just look up the interior of the killdozer. Because he attached cameras. Because... Of how this bulldozer was constructed, how this killdozer was constructed, rather, you, you can't see out of it. It's all yeah. blocked. The the shell that we were talking about earlier literally sits on top of it, covers the engine, covers um, you know most of the sensitive parts. So you can't, and you know, there's no windshield. It's literally just a a big battering ram Mm -hmm. and to be able to see he installed cameras and he had two monitors on the inside of uh the killdozer itself Mm -hmm. and and talk a little bit more about uh (laughs) the cameras themselves and like how that works because that's so it was really genius yeah i mean there were just video cameras that were linked to two monitors and the thing is is 
we say two monitors, but that's kind of why I say look this up if you're not seeing it on the video right now because when you say monitors, the first thing that comes up into your head is, you know, uh, computer monitors. Like, they right. look okay. Look, this was in 2004, okay? So these monitors are, like, real old-school TV-looking monitors. Like, one kind of looks like... Well, one was a VHS TV combo. Right. If it you, looked like, uh, in in my head, being a 90s kid, like, it's like the classic... I know someone out there is going to agree with me, but in your head, you see the Hello Kitty TV yeah. with the VHS put in. Yeah. And it... it it looked like that, but it wasn't a Hello Kitty, obviously. Yeah, it's exactly like that. It had a VHS and everything. And then the other one was even smaller, I think, right? Mm -hmm. And so there were, uh, I don't know how many video cameras. I think there were just two. Maybe there were three. But there were at least two, and they were linked into these two um, monitors that were inside the vehicle because, again, he can't see out of this car, out of this car, out of this killdozer. He can't see out of it, so he has to use these video cameras to see where he's going. And it would seem as if, you know, the cops could just shoot these cameras or hit them or something to, to, you know, to get them to be taken down. But the thing about this, the thing about what he did was he surrounded these video cameras in three-inch bulletproof plastic. Um, and he had compressed air nozzles that were fitted to the glass or to in, just inside that little protective case that would blow dust away from the video camera. So he went so far as to making sure dust wouldn't block his vision on the video cameras. He thought of everything. He had onboard fans. He had an air conditioning uh, air conditioner to keep himself cool uh, while he was driving. And it's it's absolutely insane. Yeah, even funny enough, when the actual rampage was happening, there was a newscaster that talked. Uh, she specifically said, "Like I don't even know how he's seeing. He must have such a small range of view." But really, it was a lot better than you would think because he sort of like took all these precautions and really like put some thought into it. Yeah, <laughs> if if you watch like the helicopter camera footage. You know, they're saying, we don't know who this is. And it's so true. Like, you can't see inside this thing at all. So while it's happening, at least, they don't know who the hell is, is going on this rampage. They have no idea. Sure. I mean, maybe they figured it out. Maybe they were like, where's Marvin? And, and then someone's like, I can't find him. Oh, yeah, I yeah. can't find him either. Yeah, I saw that bulldozer last yeah, week. That oh, that's was right. familiar. Where was it? Remember six months ago when we saw he, he had some weird wow. bulldozer? I think that oh. was a dream. Oh, my God. That yeah, wasn't right. real. I don't know. Hopefully that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so he had, here's the thing. We said that he didn't kill anyone else, but he had gun ports fitted with a 50 caliber rifle, a 308 semi automatic rifle and a 22 rifle and they were all fitted um with a one inch thick uh, steel plate yeah he had gun ports in this thing yeah i mean it was just you could you know through the concrete and the plating you could see he had this the, the barrel of the rifles were sticking out of the fucking front or side of this thing it's and he had a supposedly had a handgun as well inside um inside with him um, and the thing is, like we said earlier, once he was eight, you know, once he got into the cabin of the killdozer, he had no way of getting out. He he lowered the, um, you know, he he lowered all of this on top of him as on the day of, and so there was no way he was getting out. And in the end, we find out that the cops couldn't just get in either; they had to actually cut into him cut into the killdozer and, and get him out, which took time. I mean, and even imagine, try and put yourself in this guy's shoes. Like, imagine the feeling of, like, knowing that you're about to do this mm -hmm. and there's no way of getting out of what you're putting yourself into as that, like, armor just starts to, like, slowly fall down on. I don't know. It's very... I don't know. I always try and put myself in other people's shoes, and that mm. seems like a, a really intense situation to to go through. Yeah, and, and, and they said that he used a homemade crane to lower the armor right. hole over everything, and including himself. And there's a quote by the investigators saying, once he tipped the lid shut, he knew he wasn't getting out. 
So it's scary as shit. You're you're making this last. Oh god, what an idiot! I'm sorry. I mean, he's really smart, but damn. I mean, he's definitely not a reasonable man. As uh, <laughs> as, as reasonable as, as he, he claimed, at least. Yeah, he said he was very reasonable. And sometimes reasonable men do unreasonable things. And that's such a bullshit thing to say because, yeah, that's not... I mean, I get that that can be a thing, but not over this, dude. I I don't know. I sort of look at that quote as something that's been... It can be used for any context. And just on its base, it makes somebody look crazy. But if you listen to the tapes of what he said... It's it's hard to think that this person has really like lost his mind. He seems very sound. It just yeah. seems like he was fed up with the bullshit and was trying, at least from my perspective, like make up a, a point. I don't know. It's weird. What he did was very unreasonable. I mean, there's no arguing around that. Yeah. It just. I don't know. It's hard to like look at him as, you know, a person who didn't know what they were doing. Like in in some of the cases we've covered, it is really easy to be like, "Oh, you're just out of control." Like yeah. you you never had a chance, but this guy seemed like it was very deliberate. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, eh, that's sort of the thing. I mean, that's the thing with like uh with the DC snipers, dude. I mean, they True. As crazy as what they did, it was very planned, you know. It was very well thought out. They got away for a little bit, you know. They got away with just sniping people at random. At that time. At that time. Probably never happened now, but yeah, I yeah, agree. Yeah, they would know who the hell it was just from all the cameras around, dude. You can yep. never do that now, but... So anyways, so on to the actual rampage. Look, he built this, this killdozer over the course of a year and a half. And it is now ready to go, and he is ready to go, and he is pissed off. And on June 4th, 2004, he drives his armored bulldozer through 13 buildings, and he caused $7 million worth of damage. And he just went, he just went right through the wall of his, of his shed, right, just to get out, like, he just hopped in, had everything sealed up, and then started with his own shed. Because yeah, he had to just the ran the through day. the fucking door because, yeah. you know, that's how you do when you're in the kill dozer. Yeah, I guess you don't do anything else. You're about to go tear up the city. You're, you're fine. You're, you're going to die. Oh, yeah. You're fine with. That's the first little hit of adrenaline you get, I'm sure. Yeah, so what, what all did he go through? So he ended up going through um, his former business, which was the automotive shop. Mm-hmm. The mu- muffler shop, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, the muffler <laughs> shop. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, the concrete plant, he went through the town hall, um, one of the local newspapers, uh, you know. Which had editorialized against him, basically. I guess they had ran some... Uh, Local articles demonizing Mr. Marvin. Right. Talking about the, you know, what was happening Mm -hmm. with the disputes of land. And then he actually ended up going through the home of a former mayor who didn't even live there at that time. It was his wife, which is sort of a, you know, a moot point. But still, he decided to take it out. It's more of a symbol. It was petty. It was just he's being petty about it. (laughs) Yeah, he's there. So he might as well. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's, you know, pretty much everyone that are all the buildings that he went through somehow had connections with him. Um, right. And the whole attack only lasted two hours. Yeah, exactly. Two hours and what, seven minutes or something like that? Right. So, you know, I, mean, I guess that's kind of a long time. You know, I guess sure, not. Yeah. If he has I to mean, go. the cops are following yeah. him the whole time, trying to take yeah. down this thing, shooting it. Um, someone even threw a flashbang into the exhaust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, didn't do anything. Didn't, didn't do, do anything. anything. Just kept going. Yeah. So it was two hours and seven minutes. He damaged thirteen buildings. Like I said, he knocked out a natural gas service to City Hall, and he he damaged a truck pretty bad. He damaged the utility service center. The truck's like ripped in half from the pictures that I saw or the video or something. Uh, I think there's just pictures of it. We can probably throw on there. And, uh, yeah, again, no one besides from Marvin was killed. 
And um, luckily, they, yeah. And the thing was, is they used the uh, Grand County uh, emergency dispatchers. They used a reverse nine one one emergency system to basically notify residents and property owners that there was a rampage going on in the town, which is such a weird thing to think about. What do you say? <laughs> I mean, honestly, you just say, hey, look, there's this bulldozer and... In a small town like that? Yeah. Yeah, there's a bulldozer and it's tearing up shit, so get out of the way, you know, just to make sure people aren't killed. Sure. Yeah, I I feel like you couldn't do that in a big city, really. You can't, like, create a panic like that. In a place like that, though, they're able to let everyone know, and everyone is alert at that point, at the least. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think about his... What do you think about what people... You know, there are people that defend Marvin... And say that he made a very strong point of not hurting anyone uh, during the rampage. So, what do you think about that? Like, what do you think that he made a good point not to hurt anyone? He just wanted to tear down buildings, or do you think it's kind of in the middle? But he didn't really care if he hurt people. What do you think? It's hard to tell. He didn't. He had guns mm-hmm. on the. Th- Uh, you know, on board, on the killdozer. He didn't shoot at the cops. He did shoot at, like, a propane gas, um, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, there was a a local propane gas business, but he he didn't shoot at cops. It seemed like he had a mission. He was just trying to complete his mission, and then he was done. Yeah, and the thing thing about it, though, um, that's kind of, you know, so that's kind of true. He didn't really go out. It's... I feel like if he had really tried, he probably could have killed someone. But at the same time, maybe he his... could have easily killed somebody. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. But he the just thing didn't. is, but the, the thing is, though, is like he's so he's shooting at these tanks. If they were to explode, it's like you're taking out a ton of people. It was right next to the senior citizens complex, mm-hmm. right? So it was there were all these cops everywhere. Um, and the thing was, is the sheriff's department did say that he fired many bullets from the semi-automatic rifle at Cody Doshef uh, when he tried to stop the assault on his okay. concrete plant. And of course, he tried to use that. <laughs> There's like a, there was a little mini war going on between the killdozer and Cody Doshef's <laughs> uh, uh, tractor. <laughs> yeah, it was like a track scraper, track two, like a wheel tractor scraper thing. And yeah, it had it had no <laughs> it had no chance. That was pretty funny, actually seeing that from the helicopter from the chopper above. Yeah, it is really yeah, it's really funny because he's just like, Wah! and no, he has yeah. no chance against no this chance. tank basically. And the thing is, is you know the state the state patrol officers they say that they were fired on before they fired at him. Kind of hard to know exactly. They could just say that. Um, but it is, you know, it is said that he did fire on them. So as far as if he, look, he probably could have made more of an effort to kill people, but I also don't think that he went out of his way to make sure he didn't hurt anyone. He's going through buildings. He can't see inside the buildings. You know what I'm saying? Like anyone could be in any of these buildings. He could just run into them and kill anyone. Like. True. And he could, and I was shooting at the propane tanks. If any of them were to just, if the whole thing were to go up, dude, you'd be, you're killing people. So he definitely wasn't like, I don't think going out of his way to hurt anyone, to not hurt anyone, I mean, but. Well, he, he went out of his way to hurt himself. That's yeah, for sure. That's true. And at the town library, a children's program was, in, was going on when everything was happening. So it's just like, you know. That was near the town center, right? Or the or the uh, the what was it? Um, the town hall. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's just something that like he definitely he definitely is out of his mind. He's going crazy on this rampage, and he def- I don't think he really cared about not killing people. I mean, that's what it is to me. Yeah, it's hard to tell, especially with the. I mean, I feel like he could have, like, he was surrounded by cops the entire time. If he wanted to do something, he but they were mostly behind could've. him, though. Mm-hmm. True, but and he didn't have a rifle f- facing them. You know, like they knew where the rifles were and they knew how to get out of the way. And he didn't. I don't think he had. There's no way he really had that great of range over with these rifles. Not, not so much that the cops could have gotten away from it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, 
But they they fired on him. Of course, it's not. They can't go through anything. They're not. They're not getting through the steel, the concrete. They're not getting through any of the armor, and they're also not getting through the bulletproof pl- plastic that is uh, containing uh, the video cameras. And at one point, there was a sheriff or somebody, uh, somebody from the local police that climbed up atop the bulldozer and rode it like a bronc buster trying to figure out a way to get a bullet inside the dragon. That's the actual quote. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, Very dramatized. He had to jump off eventually because I guess he's obviously going through buildings and stuff. Yeah, because there's a rubble falling on your head. Yeah, you sort of got to get out of the way for that. And, you know, the thing about this town, too, uh, just to bring it up, is the town was the town's really small. I mean... I can't find a population for what it was. I'm sure I could, actually, if I tried to look into the demographic history of, of this town. But the population in 2016 was only 1,800. So this is not a big town. So, that, you know, and it took him two hours to get through, I'd say, a, probably a decent decent part of this town, you know. I mean, bulldozers aren't very fast. Yeah, and Obviously. it's not like he demolished everything. Like, mm-hmm. even during the helicopter footage, you can see him, like, even, like, weaving between things. But some things, it's clearly he's going straight for it and taking out yeah. as much as he can. Well, obviously, he knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah, exactly. He went, th- he, went ex- he went straight to the buildings that he wanted to try to demolish. Apparently, even in the... Uh, Killdozer itself, there was a list of people in buildings he wanted to take out. Mm. So it was premeditated for <laughs> sure. Well, the whole thing <laughs> to say the, <laughs> the whole thing was definitely it had gone back for a while. This guy had thought about this quite a bit. Yeah, so at some point obviously the state patrol and the local police knew they were running out of options in terms of... They couldn't do anything. Yeah. They couldn't penetrate it. These guys are basically just following this thing that's destroying the entire town. Exactly. They have yeah. no idea what to do. Yeah, they don't know what to do. So the governor at the time, Bill Owens, he denies this. He denies what uh, people say about what he was trying to decide on what to do. But the word on the street is that he definitely considered authorizing the National Guard uh, to use an Apache attack helicopter equipped with a anti-tank, um, like a Hellfire missile or with some type of other anti-tank missile to destroy this uh, bulldozer, killdozer tank. He, again, he denies it um, up until even relatively recently. Like in the the government denying things. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's I funny because so. you look. Um, it did. It, so he says he denies it, but there are members of the state patrol that say he definitely considered the attack, but decided against it because obviously the collateral damage of a missile strike would probably be more than what this bulldozer could do, you know, sure. especially since they're evacuating everyone. Like they've already got everyone leaving and they're, you know, they're minimizing the, the risk of, of death already. So yeah, the fact that, you know, it's probably not a good idea to bring this thing down. Right? And it definitely wouldn't scare the American public if they saw a U.S. Uh, <laughs> a hellfire jet, missile drop a bomb <laughs> yeah. on you know U.S. citizens. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure and, that and would go over tiny well. Tiny little town in Colorado. <laughs> it's probably not a good idea. But so, uh, so Marvin took his his kill dozer to the Gamble's Hardware Store, and he ran into some problems. What kind of problems did he run into, Stefan? The engine. So, yeah, as he amble, er, entered this uh, store called Gamble's, it was a grocery store, he sort of, like, was taking out, 
well, from the helicopter view, it was the left-hand side of this building, and dragging across it, he eventually got stuck because the floor collapsed and he sort of sunk into the basement of this mm-hmm. Gamble's grocery store. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, like one tread of the uh, killdozer touched the, the, the ground of the basement, I think, and so he just couldn't get out. He was just stuck. And, and the thing was is he ran into other problems with the actual um, the actual bulldozer as well because the engine ceased at this point well and previous to before this the radiator was busted as mm-hmm. well by the hel- uh helicopter footage you can tell like there's a giant uh like basically y- y- you can see there's something leaking from the dozer onto the asphalt and then he enters gambles basically mm-hmm. after yeah. that so the the machine is clearly failing this is his last stand yeah. and he ends up getting stuck yeah and 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 that's the thing he knew he was stuck the engine died it's not going anymore um SWAT team members have now uh, surrounded the machine and the members of the SWAT team heard a single gunshot uh from inside the cab and it was later found out that it was a 357 caliber handgun. It's pretty haunting. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's so protected that, yeah, it's going to be a muffled gunshot. You're not going to be able to sure. hear it that well. It's going to be a, you know, or something like that. It's not, you know, so, yeah, it is pretty haunting that they just heard this and heard this guy kill himself. It's pretty sad. I mean, the whole thing is sad. Uh, luckily, no one in the in the city was killed, though, and... And that's good. Yeah, but, true. Um, you know, this guy was... What do you think about him? I don't know. I mean, I feel like in society we need people like... We need people like that. But like, And you always hear people say this, but it's like if he would have taken that ambition and used that towards something positive, he really could have made a good impact on the world. And, like, that may seem crazy... And maybe naive, and I, I'm fully, I, I will admit to that, but it's like, I don't know, you see a lot of potential <laughs> in it, and it's sad to see a guy that who was just fighting back. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Uh, f- you know, fail like that, and he, I don't know. For- well, look, as far as fighting back, I don't really like that. I don't like using that term because it's like, I guess he was technically. What did he do other than that? Yeah, but sure, he's fighting back, but damn. Don't do that. I mean, I he think, didn't hurt anyone. He caused a lot of property damage. Yeah, but he could have hurt someone very, very, very easily. Yeah, yeah. I think he could have uh, hurt someone agreed. way easier than like everyone's saying. Is but like, it, <laughs> agreed. But he. But the fact is, is that he didn't. Yeah, he didn't go guess, out of but, his way to hurt people either. Eh, he I went guess to not, but, cause yeah. damage, and that's what he did. He went on a rampage. But he, I agree with you. He just as easily could have killed someone. It was reckless. Yeah, and the, and the thing that you said about the potential for greatness, I mean, we've seen that a million times. I mean, you see people who are incredibly talented or smart throw their lives away or become Darth serial Vader. killers. And, yeah, Darth Vader. Ted Bundy? Ted Bundy, for sure, dude. Uh, but something's just wrong with that dude. Honestly. I know, but it doesn't. It still it it doesn't make it better knowing oh, that I've yeah. seen other people like that. It's just almost, and maybe that again. That's my naive mind talking. But it's like, man, these people were. This guy was an engineer, basically, mm-hmm. who just. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we're giving him too much credit. Maybe it wasn't that hard to do that. I mean, he had yeah. the bulldozer. All he right. didn't build the bulldozer. He just put armor around it. That can't be that hard. <laughs> I <laughs> accept that. I Maybe you're right. Okay, so the thing was, after he killed himself, the police now had to figure out how the hell to get into um, into this killdozer. Right. So they, they tried using three explosions, and after the third explosion, didn't do anything. It, they weren't removing the steel plates. They weren't doing anything. They had to um, cut through everything with a cutting, basically a cutting torch, and it's just, um, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a cutting torch, and they had to torch through and burn, uh, burn through all of this armor, and they got his body out at two a.m. that next morning. Jeez, 
Yeah. Um, so it definitely took them some time to get into this this tank and and remove his body. It was built well. It was built real well. It was built this very built for tough. <laughs> <laughs> not for not a sponsor <laughs> not a sponsor i'm sorry um yeah and honestly that's that's kind of it the uh it was that was a real real crazy story and i and i think that was kind of what why we wanted to go over it it was very it's different than most true crime um episodes that we have done in the past <laughs> You know, he didn't kill anyone, uh, but it's definitely a crime, obviously. And he, yeah. it was it was a real crazy one. He went through this rampage, and there's only so much that we can cover in an hour. And you know, I just just a message to everyone: go out there and find more out about this because it's so interesting. Yeah, there's so much to learn from this, and this is like, you know, our our presentation of this is just you know, an introductory, but really this is pretty interesting what this guy went through in the interest intricacies of yeah. this case are amazing. I mean, we covered most of it, but it's definitely just interesting to look up videos and images of, of this. It's really interesting to go through and find pictures of everything. And also lis- listen to the tapes that he made before the rampage because he had made, Tons of tape, hours. Yeah, there's like two and a half hours of it. Yeah, of worth of him just talking into a tape recorder and just talking about the um, the tr- his his troubles and you know like he speaks his truth. He le- he starts from the beginning. Truly, exactly. Um, if you hate this episode, send us an email at the Strangeland Podcast at gmail dot com. If you love it, do the same thing. Uh, check us out soon. Really. Now, I mean, yeah, by the time this uploads, we should have this episode and two or three extra backlog episodes added to all of the podcast apps like iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, all of those. Um, That should all be done very, very soon. Uh, So by the time this uploads to YouTube, it should be everywhere else. It might not be on Podbean. I don't fully understand that. I'm just going to say it. I don't get Podbean, but I'll try. If you don't hear it on Podbean, I'm sorry. But it will be on all the other ones. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening. What are we doing the next week? We don't know. We were going to do... We don't know. We don't know. We were, Look, we were going to do... Um, do you guys know? Let us know if you know. Yeah, comment. Comment in the YouTube... YouTube, comment, and let us know what we should do. Uh, we have tons of ideas. Honestly, we have so many ideas from people, we could just keep doing those. But True. I wanted to do, um, what's her name? Or what's his name? Conrad? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to do the texting case of the girlfriend who convinced her boyfriend to commit suicide. Uh, because that's real interesting and it's real popular right now. I have a bunch of information on it. But I don't know if we're going to do that next week. We might hold out on that one. Um, So just comment. Let us know what we should do. And we may do it. Maybe Yeah, definitely. We'll see. We'll decide. And if you have emailed us, thank you very much. Yes, we love you. Yes. Yes, we love everything about you. (laughs) All right, good night, everybody. Thanks. For listening. (laughs) 